Hi everyone, it's Liam here from Rating the Races. So let's have a look at some of the racing on Saturday, uh, see if we can find a few winners. Um, there's a few races that I'm really quite confident on. There's a few races that I am not confident on at all. But a few horses. So we'll start off with a couple of races at Ascot that we are going to talk about. Um, obviously I can't talk about every race because I'll be showing you the ratings for all of the races, which wouldn't be fair on premium and pro members. So we're going to start off with the Swinley Handicap Chase um, at Ascot. There's two in here that I like. Um, I've highlighted both of them uh, for different reasons uh, for this race. And they are Phoenix Way, who's back to Ascot. Um, I think he's on a good mark. And Captain Noor. Now it's very interesting to see Captain Noor running here and not at... Uh, Kempton next weekend now he's not running at Kempton next weekend in my opinion because it looks like Frodon will and with that in mind Captain Noor would have been four or five pound out of the handicap here at Ascot he's not out of the handicap um, I think he carries 10 stone 8 he gets in and he's the one to beat his second last time was his first good run for a little while it was his first run that they were probably trying to run well um, he's really well handicapped the track, the trip, everything's fine for him. Um, and he is the one to beat in this race. And I think they're going they're going 9-2 to two about Captain Or You can actually see the blue line for Phoenix Way, the danger. Um, but I highlighted previously, Phoenix Way down £2. Uh, could return to Ascot or go to Kempton. They're not going to Kempton, they're going to Ascot. Um, would definitely have a chance. I keep highlighting Captain Or. He kept dropping. He did go up £2 after this, after finishing, what was he, third last time? Uh, he was second last time, was it the Skybet Chase? Um, a much better race from him. He's now on a mark that it's worth going for. You know, I think they they just didn't get him quite uh, high enough again for the Kempton race. But this race they'll definitely be going for. And I fully expect a big run here. A, a potential idea of what, something you could think about doing. So Christian Williams is going to have a good couple of weeks, isn't he? With Captain Orr here. And nope, not the Scottish National. And Kitty's Light in the Ida. Maybe they could be worth a good bet uh, in a double, um, an each way double potentially. I think both of them will go very, very close. They're both very well handicapped. Christian Williams obviously started to farm the races at this time of year last year with Win My Wings. Uh, Captain or Kitty's Lie, all running really big races in those um, feature handicaps. And I fully, ex fully expect Captain Or to go very, very close on Saturday. The biggest danger is Phoenix Way. You may want to have a small save on him, but I think Captain Or takes all the beating um, at Ascot. Also at Ascot, there's this 2 mile 3 handicap hurdle, and it's a Class 2, but it's a slightly easier Class 2 than previous Class 2 races you've seen. And the one for me, without a doubt, has to be 50 ball. He dropped two pounds to 128 after his last run. Um, clearly needed to be fit as only four finished that race. It was the uh, Lanzarote hurdle at um, Sandown. He's two from two over hurdles at Ascot. And I said back in on the 17th of January that this race looked ideal for him. Um, he does run here. And he's currently, you can currently get 12s at William Hill for some reason. I think he'll go off closer to second favourite behind Irish Hill, maybe. Um, yeah, as we can see, there's some big figures here for um, 50 ball, and I fully expect him to go very, very close here. Is that Niall Hulan able to claim? I can't remember. He is. He's able to take another three off. He's running off 125. I expect him to go very, very close there at Ascot. Um, so that's 50 ball. I'd like to see two friendly run well. He was one of my horses to follow. Unfortunately, he's finished second the last three times. Um, but I just feel that 50 ball is... This is his track. This is his trip. Uh, he's well handicapped. Whereas two friendly is probably going up the handicap without actually winning. Um, so yeah, 50 ball would be my selection there. And I'm quite keen on both of those at Ascot, to be honest. Moving on to Haydock. Um, so the first race I wanted to look at was the Rendlesham Hurdle. Now... This is an interesting race because two years ago, Third Wind ran in this, and I tweeted before the race, 
Let's actually have a look what I tweeted. Gutted if Third Wind wins this. He looks perfect for the Potemps final. He did go and win it. And he ended up running in the Stayers hurdle and disappointed. I think he, I can't remember where he finished. The following year, he ran in it again. This time he wasn't, uh, he didn't win. And he, he did run in the Potemps final and he won the Potemps final. And I think a few of these horses here will be having that in mind as well. Ashtown Lad, Itchy Feet were cool. Green Book all qualified for the Potemps final. Could any of them win the Stayers hurdle? In my opinion, no. So what's the point of trying to win the Rendlesham when you're going to affect your chance of winning the uh, Potemps final? Could they all win the Potemps final? Green Book, potentially. Fifth in the Albert Bartlett last year. A good run. Probably a graded horse running in a handicap. Were cool. Clearly has good R figures here. Look at this 163 here. Clearly has some ability about him. Um, got him qualified just last time. Finished fourth. Um, yeah. Is already in as well. The, oh, the other thing I must not point out about these four. The handicap marks will get them in the final. So they don't need to win this. Um, itchy feet would probably be the least confident of the four for the Potemps final. And maybe going for it here. Uh, Ashdown Lad, I think, can certainly win the Potemps final the way he travelled last time. So with all of that in mind, I'm looking at who do I think is going to try and win this race then. And I've landed on Ernie River. Um, dropped back down to hurdles last time. He finished second um, after a short spell over fences. He's got some really good back form. He's quite lightly raced. He's only had the... what's he had? Nine runs in his career... Uh, you know, he, he he went off 7-1 for a race against Hitman. He was trying to take on uh, Mr. Fisher, St. Calvados and Nutswell in a grade 2. They really like Ernie River. He ran in a grade 1. He went off 11-4 last year for the Aintree grade 1. Well, with all of that in mind, if he hurdles well, I think he's the one to beat here because he doesn't have any... Um, Potemps final aspirations because he's not qualified and I, I kind of feel that this is worth trying to win for them unlike for Green Book, Ashdown Lad, Itchy Feet and McCall who I think all should be ridden not con not right out the back because they don't want to drop too much but I don't think they'll be wanting to win the race they just want a fitness run with Cheltenham in mind in my opinion um, so yeah I'm going to go with Ernie River there and can't remember what price the market might have, have latched onto that and and be looking at that as well that these don't need to win we're cool itchy feet ashtown lad and green book don't need to win and with that in mind especially if you say they're not going to win none of them are going to try try to win you've then got the favorite ernie river against two outsiders so yeah i'm quite keen on ernie, ernie river in that race we then have a look at the Grand National Handicap Trial. Now, this is a tricky one. Um, Quick Wave, Cloudy Glen, Fortescue and Grumpy Charlie all have Grand National entries. They're rated, Grumpy Charlie's rated 140. Probably needs to go up a few pounds to get in. But he's so inconsistent, he would be a concern to pick. Fortescue probably doesn't need to go up. Disappointed last time, but probably uh, the race before Aintree took it out of him. I quite liked him, but I think quite a few of these need soft ground. Cloudy Glen off 145 and Quick Wave off 148, the Venetia Williams pair. They don't need to win to get in the Grand National. They will. I'm pretty confident they'll get in anyway. So it, they would almost be harming their chance if they were to win this race. So who doesn't need to, to to win this race or, or could win this race because they don't have any Grand National trial or Grand National aspirations. Well, the obvious one, Bristol Demay, he doesn't have a Grand National entry this year. He was second in this race um, last year behind Galloping Bear. Um, obviously, the Galloping Bear has actually been disqualified since then. They were miles clear of time to get up. But that was on heavy going, and Bristol de May is a real soft, heavy ground horse. He's not going to get that here. He's only going to get good to soft, I think it is. Which, 
it's a bit of would be a bit of a concern for Bristol DeMay. I think he wants it softer than that. I'm not sure about time to get up. He's pulled up the last twice. But if we went back to his run in this race last year, he actually travelled really well. He came into the race nicely. Um, I highlighted after the race how well he travelled and then didn't find anything on the heavy going. Does he want heavy going or does he just want... Does he want it slightly you know, easier than that? Soft or, or good to soft? If he does... He was rated 144 last year. He's only rated 133 this year. He's 11 pounds lower. It wouldn't surprise me if there was um, a gamble on him, for example. And he's he's handicapped to go very close. You know, he won a Midlands National, I believe. He won a Midlands National in 2021 off 138. He went off three to one that day on good to soft. You know, I'm probably talking myself into a small bet here on time to get up on the basis that he doesn't want the heavy going at Haydock. He just wants that good to soft. He did travel. The last couple of runs have been disappointing in um, a Welsh national trial and a Welsh national. They, you know, what was the reasons for them? Maybe his first run, good to soft after eight months off the track. Maybe that was the reason. And then last time out, it was just too far on, on soft ground. You know, I could be completely guessing here and, and making this up. But I'm I'm going to give him one more chance, I think. Time to get up off a really low mark. Uh, and what sort of price is he? Oh, he's actually being backed. I didn't know that. You can still get 28s. That 33s will be a lie. That won't be available. You can still get 28s, I think, 25s. Yeah, he's probably the one I'm going to have a small bet on in this race. Um... Time to get up the outsider of the field, hoping that he wants the better going at Haydock. Let's go back to Haydock and we'll talk about one more race. It's the Potemps Qualifier. Now, obviously, as I've said, who here is not going to be trying to win the race but needs to qualify? Mill Green, 138, probably will get in off that. Finished second in this race last year before finishing second in the final. Probably going to do similar here. Party business, 139. They're clearly trying to get him qualified, having run in a qualifier at um, Sandown the time before that. Um, which, as I said, was a qualifier. It was probably also a competitive handicap rather than this. I think they'll get him qualified here. I think they'll finish in the top four. I think Mill Green will finish in the top four. But I don't think either of those are going to win. They're not going to want to win for sure. Otherwise, they're going to end up too high in the Potemps final. So who could be aiming to, to win this race. I think the most likely winner here is Jirash. Um, Brandy McQueen has clearly been in great form, but he's gone up another £7. I know Edward takes five off, but he did last time, so he's still gone up. He has still gone up £7. Jirash, yes, is up £6 for his win at Plumpton. On his first run over this trip, um, he'd previously been... In a grade 3 handicap race. He'd finished 3rd to L.L. Bell. Which is a good run. He finished 3rd in a bumper to R. Jester. That's a good run. You know he's very lightly raced. There could be a lot lot more to come from Jirash. And Jirash is only rated 132. That probably won't get him in the attempts final. And. Because of how unexposed he is. If he. If you know Gary Moore might think. Oh this is a horse. This is a, a 145 horse. So they could win this, go up six, seven pounds, still get in the Potemps final and still probably go close in that if Gary Moore believes he's got a horse like that. And that might have been the plan was to wait as long as possible, run him in one of the last qualifiers and then qualify and go on to the final. Um, Brandon McQueen, as I said, does need to win to get in the final, but even winning, I don't think gets in the final. So I think there'll probably be one or two in here that have been put in this race with the final in mind, but knowing that they probably have to win the race as well. Um, obviously, it doesn't always work. Riggs, for Dan Skelton a few years ago, looked like the only horse that needed to win a Potemps qualifier to actually qualify. And ended up, I think, finishing last or pulling up. Um, but yeah, I think Jirash is the one to be on in the Potemps qualifier for reasons I've just mentioned. Do we have a price for Jirash? Not yet. And the final race I wanted to do a quick talk about was the King Will Hurdle. It's a grade two. 
it's not the best grade two, but it is still a grade two. Now, interestingly, First Street and I Like To Move It both run in this race. Why is that interesting? Well, yesterday, or the day before, I highlighted that Glory and Fortune had dropped four pounds to 144 and could be aimed at the county hurdle. If he is aimed at the county hurdle, of a one pound higher mark than when winning the 2022 Betfair hurdle, when he won that race, he beat First Street and I Like To Move It. They were second and third behind Glory and Fortune in that handicap. And I'm just going to double check something, but I'm pretty sure that I'm right. Glory and Fortune. Glory and Fortune ran off 143 that day. I Like To Move It 138, First Street 141. I Like To Move It is now... I Like To Move It is 152, First Street 152, Glory and Fortune 144. So Glory and Fortune is one pound higher. I didn't do the math then. So 152, 152. 152, 152. I Like To Move It is 14. And First Street is 11. So First Street is 11 pounds higher. I Like To Move It is 14 pounds higher. And Glory and Fortune is just one pound higher. And that's why he could be aimed at the um, county hurdle. And if we we look further into that, one of these, you know, if First Street or I Like To Move It wins, they go up probably even more in the handicap. You know, they could be rated 155, 156, and make that Glory and Fortune 144 mark look very, very workable for the county hurdle. So I don't want to actually have a bet in that Kingwell hurdle, but it's a race that I'm very interested in with Glory and Fortune for the county hurdle in mind. So who do I like? Let's go back over those. Captain Or, Strong Fancy at Ascot. Wouldn't have a problem putting him in a double with Kitty's Light uh, next week. 50 Ball, I think this is an easier race. I think uh, the ground will, will suit him more and the fact he's now had a run um, will, will give him a good chance. At Haydock, Earn River, I think is the only one with a chance that actually wants to win this race. Time to get up just in case he bounces back um, at a big, big price. And Jirash, I think, is probably the only horse in this Potemps qualifier that, or one of the only ones that actually wants to win the race, that can win the race and potentially go on to bigger and better things. I think Brandy McQueen will probably be coming towards the end of his run soon.